Hello and welcome to the So Far So Rare podcast. This week I was joined by Quinny and Hendo who were both on months ago and we talked about the massive milestone for So Rare, 100,000 users with a card. We talked about the return of the MLS in Asia. And we talked about the future of rewards and real life experiences. Then we answered lots of your questions. If you do like this video, please do like this video and please subscribe to the 1.37pm YouTube channel. You can also find me if you look up John Nellis um, So Rare. You'll find me there. I hope you enjoy it. Lads, welcome to the podcast. You've both been on before. You're both my friends. We've known each other for years. We're going away on holiday this week. We'll talk about that later. We'll start with you, Quinny, because you're in the top left for me. We'll go left to right. Quinny, how are you? Introduce yourself briefly for anyone who doesn't know who you are. I'm sure they probably do if they consume so rare content, but let us know what your story is. Uh, so, yeah, I'm Quinny. I make content on YouTube. I play predominantly rare pro divisions. Good wee bit unlimited and rare and started knocking about with a lot more super rares recently and getting my first unique. So that's kind of where I'm at the now. Broad spectrum, one of every colour at least. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And Hendo, you're joining us as well. Uh, you've been on before as well. We're both on very early actually, so it's probably been months. I was only saying to, I think it was Techers was on a couple of weeks ago and it was like, I didn't realise it had been like seven months. It feels like it, the podcast hasn't been around that long, but we're coming on 35, 40 episodes. So, Hendo, for anyone who's a new listener who wasn't here when and listened to the first episode with you, give us a quick introduction, then we'll get stuck in. Yeah, so, uh, obviously, my name's Ross. Uh, usually play, same as Quinny, sort of, well, what we call D3, D, uh, D4 kind of thing. Still stuck <laughs> in that that point of view. Yeah. Obviously, we've, we all three of us have known each other. I was actually thinking about this probably, what, about three years now? Something yeah, like it's been a while. Like. Um, Easily. And finally, it'll be, it'll be the, it'll, I'm very excited because it'll be the first time we've actually met each other in real life um, and we're going to a couple of football games. It's going to be brilliant. Yeah, exactly. So we'll get into that with everyone very shortly, just tell you what our, what our story is. It's a nice kind of story because most people don't really have someone in real life to talk about so rare with. And I think us three and a couple of other lads are going to be sat with our feet up in a villa for a few days, going to a few games following the weekend's fixtures hoping some people get rewards i was thinking we can even open our rewards together on the friday how fun will that be let's hope someone hits a monster that'd be good but um the big story i think this week and something to get very excited about is so rare has hit 100,000 users who own at least one blockchain card so that is a hundred thousand users that have signed up signed in deposited ethereum and bought a card of some description now 80,000, 82,000 nearly of those have bought two or more and 64,000 have bought five or more and obviously went for that free card with the affiliate sign up. Um, absolutely mad. Uh, I think like whenever we signed up, I mean, you guys signed up just before me. You were a large part of me getting into the platform. I signed up around 28th, 29th of September, 2020. And to put it into perspective, that really wasn't that long ago. And there was less than 2,000 people who owned one card, which is mad. So, I mean, that's more than 50x in less than a year and a half um you were on even before that but like what are your initial reactions to that i think that's that's a huge milestone to celebrate obviously next up a million i i'm buzzing for it <laughs> um you know it, it's weird like I, I made a video talking about it all kind of earlier on and i think it feels like the hundred thousand it feels like we've all kind of anticipated it probably since mm. like fifty thousand or maybe even 20 if you it feels like we've been waiting for this six figure milestone to come for a fair bit of time and now that it's here, like, I think it's just uh, written in the stars. It's before game week 248, you know, right before the big mama jamma week. It's, you know, big six yeah. figures are getting hit and we're on this kind of, hopefully maybe this little cusp of a wave of some other stuff that may be coming out. Who knows? Um, yeah, just, hopefully. It feels great. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Ross, what did you, do you give a shit? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Any, any, sort of growth <laughs> the, any growth for the platform is massive. Um, I, I think we initially spoke, Quinny, it was back Oh, way back, obviously, at the start when we both got signed up. It was about August or something, I think, that, uh, or August 2020 that I got signed yeah. up, and it was just before that for you, Quinny. And we were sort of, I think it was getting towards, like, 1,000 um, rather than sort of anything, or, sorry, towards 10,000, not 1,000. So we're like, could we get 10,000 by sort of, like, maybe th this time next year, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think it's, it's more than surpassed what we thought. And uh, the, the, the phrase that has come back to a lot of people is, it's still early. So that's that seems mm. to be what everybody's view is. It's still really early. I'm just having a look there. I mean, these are all arbitrary figures and dates, but like if we look at Gary V, I remember tweeted on the 14th of February, right? If we look from the 14th of February with 4,600 to say the 14th of March, 10,000. So that was like 
six thousand new users who bought a card within a month. I'm just wondering if we look at the last month, so a hundred thousand, and if we go back to like the twenty third of January, it was eighty five thousand. So there's fifteen thousand people have bought their first card in the last month. Like that's a, that's a lot of people in a month. Fifteen thousand new people who've deposited. I mean, that's fifteen percent of the current amount of people who've ever bought a card 15 percent of that was in the last month do you know what i mean that that is that is major major growth isn't it um exactly. and even the auction volume histories are mad i know we've had a few big ones recently with Holland and virginia the offer volume history if you look at all these charts by the way for anyone watching so rare forward slash stats there's a few charts there the offer volume have you seen that chart like it's going up and up and up we're back towards like Mar- previous like last year's february march boom in terms of the offers going on um, and the lineups are huge as well. Everything's just growth, growth, growth. It's very exciting. Um, and we're all sort of complaining about how slow things are. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, not, maybe, not how, maybe not how slow things are, but obviously with a company that's growing at such a rate, you need to the company needs to grow with the user base. Um, yeah. I think the user base is not not that they're quite demanding, but I think they're they're expecting some really basic um advancements on what they've already got um compared mm. to where where the platform's grown in the last sort of even just like few months period um mm. there really needs to be some advances to the platform to to keep that on the upward trajectory i think yeah i mean it's hard like i think they're in a position where they could probably sit back and do nothing and it'll still grow parabolically for some amount of time but i think a lot of the existing users are maybe getting frustrated this is talked about every week this at this stage in the podcast what's your vibe on that quinny are you getting a wee bit annoyed are you happy you're just chilling or torn i i, I don't know i think i give them and i'm definitely known for giving them room and a bit of slack on time scales for this type of stuff because like I always whenever I want to complain about something in any, any facet of my life or get upset by something I always try and put myself in their shoes like and I'm quite known for giving so rare a bit of slack and a bit of space and whatever and whenever I think about like you were just talking about there with the Gary V boom and all that kind of stuff when you think about the year 2021 they've had they've been like less than 50 staff, right? I forget the exact number off the top of my head, right? But a couple of dozen people. They then get the user base growth and all the money injected into them that we've seen over the last year. They then get all the investment round success that we all know about. And all that really happens in a really quick space of time. Really, you're talking about from March to like, when was the funding round thing? September or September, something like that? Yeah. You know, so in a six month period, that is a huge amount of change. And see if you, if, if you know, I'm sure everyone that listens to this works somewhere. If you can imagine how drastic and earth shattering that changes for day-to-day economics of like your working life, how many people you require to do jobs, et cetera, et cetera. It's so hard. I've never been in a company that's done that. I don't think anyone listening to this probably has, you know, cause it's not many times you get those sorts of growth numbers, you know? So when I put myself in that frame of mind, I'm always like, I, th- I always bring myself back to the same thought of, I feel that there's a big bottleneck in one day or over a month, we're going to get a, a, a sequence of events where it's going to be improvement, new license, improvement, improvement, rewards, improvement, improvement, boom. And then we're going to go, wow, what a month, you know, May was or whatever it is, you know, it happens to be. Yeah. And then all this kind of grief and, you know, and upset and impatience and, and whatever gets forgotten about instantly, you know. Well, it was only That's- three, four months ago, sort of, sorry, Ross, like where, do you know, we had the funding and then there was La Liga and then there was the Bundesliga. All of those things were within sort of five months of now. I mean, yeah. when you think about it, it's maybe not that long. What were you going to say, Hendo? It's just, I find it so illogical sometimes. People are like, they need to move on with rapid speed. Like, if most people will have a full-time job that work here. Have you ever seen them employ 50 people in the space of a week? Like, you need to vet mm. people properly so you get the right people in the right jobs. That's the reason why it's taking so long, because they're not just throwing anybody into this job, because they want people who can actually take the company forward. So, like, I think me and Quinny are maybe on the higher end of giving them slack we give them a lot of slack but mm. at the same time it's because i trust in them to get it right so i'd rather take the time to get the proper people in than just get mm. 50 people next week and then it's just a free-for-all yeah chaos yeah well look we talked about it last week um and i think the reason i bring it up is normally if people have listened to this podcast for a while they'll know i normally go through the announcements channel on discord i mean there's been nothing there for three weeks support channel there's been nothing there in the last week so we're going to just move on to our own topics and things we're excited about so the first thing to talk about quinny you kind of mentioned it there about the the beautiful period we're coming into i'm going to call it a golden period where we've got two to three months of what did you say mumbo jumbo or something what did you say the the mama jama you called it something the a bit crazy <laughs> <laughs> so, but we have jama. like 
a two or three months here now where we've got Asian football, we've got American football, we've got European football, we've got midweeks, we've got everything. And it's going to be beautiful for a few months and then it's going to be quiet for a few months if you don't hold non-European players. Your galleries are probably, I, have, I don't know about yours, Hendo, but I'm imagining you have a bit more in Asia and the MLS than me. I'm very, 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 what's the word? Empty on that front, like low on that front, very European heavy. Other than limiteds, I've got some Asians now, but like a lot of attention's turning that way. People know it's going to be a long summer, <laughs> you know. I'd say, Connie, you must be absolutely buzzing. You've some great super rares, don't you? Uh, yeah, well, I'm definitely looking forward to getting like the super rares and all that kind of thing back in action. <laughs> and like for like in terms of all the stuff that's on the go, the now, like I'm entering way more teams now because of kind of goalkeepers more regions being open and available to compete in but for me it's not about getting more teams out in this period but it's getting my stronger teams better you know so like i've got like as you said there are a couple of key supervisors maybe three or four of them we'll see how form and a few other things pan out that i can just bolt on top of my european squads and for this kind of this kind of golden period if you want to call it that um i've got european teams with rural players that are op in my opinion anyway getting bolted into each other and that's always the way i've kind of attacked trying to do well at the game is in the global and the under 23s particularly so that's man tell me about it like i've got i've got wesley coming back here in april do you know what i mean like i mean it's gonna change all-star rare pro for me but um hendo have you many coming back uh nowhere near as good as wesley anyway um but <laughs> I'll, I'll be tough. That, i know we need we need to be fair we need to keep rubbing that one in because it's it's the worst trade of all time but uh, hey here do you know what i missed out on a tyson super rare to partner with him yesterday by ours to el cid i was close i was going to pick up the the international super rare attacky stack for the summer in global sort of global rare pro i keep going to say d3 but anyway you have a few coming back don't you yeah, I do. Uh, my strategy is slightly different. So same as Quinny, obviously, in the interim, when you've got European and you've got your MLS and your K-League, J-League, it's great because you can chuck them in All-Star all together. Um, I'm kind of planning for a quiet summer, if I'm honest. So I've got my rear contingent that will be like a sort of threshold team. Past that, I'm, I'm hoping these players hit like massive form and I'm going to sell them into the market. It's something that I think me and Quinny spoke about last year and it's, it works really well because there's so little cards playing. So people will play, they'll, they'll pay that premium for them. So if you can get a person with what we call last five itis, where they get a really good <laughs> last five score, then you can start to sell it in the market at really premium prices. And that's when I start to build for the next three months, for the next six months, because mm. the gap, I'm trying to, you know, when you get the fixture congestion, sort of pre-Christmas, post-Christmas, that little three month spell, that's where I want to attack next season. And I was a little bit too weak to do it this year. So that's something that I'm really going to, like I lost key players for Russia, for example, mm. from under 23s, killed Safanov, it killed Zakarayan. So they're two main mainstays in that team. So that's the avenue that I'm going down to hopefully get that fund together and then move on to start investing that into something else for to, to attack the next sort of congestion of fixtures. Yeah, it's it's kind of a re regret's a bit strong. Is it a regret of mine? It probably is a regret it's of mine that I don't I didn't buy more in the off season, kind of like mm -hmm. sort of December. I mean, when I look it was back, such a tight prices, window though. The, the window is, was so tight. I think I was so. I was so hell bent on picking up MLS players, and then that dip never really came. Insert Andy Laird um, and his conversation <laughs> about that in black, but it's it's one of those where I was expecting. I was kind of keeping my eye there, and then just never really bothered my arse. But like when I look now at the prices of the K League players, I was blown away. I'm almost recording content maybe two months too late, but I mean it is topical now. The J League's back, the K League's back, but like. The prices, what they were two months ago, I'm like, how did I not look at it then? But maybe relative to the market, maybe the whole market's moved a bit and it's easy looking back, hindsight's great and all that. But I would love, I am having. I think Limited has given me a great avenue to have fun. Like I can sell one rare player that I kind of want to sell anyway and I can literally buy like 15 cracking Asian Limiteds. It's madness. Um, so I, I'm hoping maybe to do that with some South American teams and, um, I have a video coming out soon on YouTube with uh, So Rare Brazil, and I'm going to have a look at some Brazilian players, but like, I don't know. I feel like I kind of missed the boat, and I'm just going to overpay out of FOMO because content. <laughs> Do you know? I think it's different whenever you, you have the luxury of not making content, and you can sit in your hands for a few months. Um, but yeah. Do you feel any pressure there, Quinny, to kind of keep moving and have things going, or your gallery's just kind of balanced anyway, isn't it? Yeah, I actually... Um... On to your kind of point of kind of buying them in the off season. The off season was so good for these cards. Cards I'd planned on selling like 
now I sold in December because the prices went mental. You know, I got like just under half a coin for Mickey Yamane in December. And that was like at the peak time of NG, not a game in sight for ages. Same way like Johnny Russell, I think I got about half a coin for him as well at the same kind of point in time. And it was just, and again, Hendo kind of um, mentioned this earlier in the SO5 aspect when there's just less cards to play. But at that point in time, when people are shopping in the off season, it's, there's only a finite amount available for you to buy ahead of next season, you know, because we're not, we didn't get any new faces um, in terms of the missing cards that were there and the auctions, um, you know, they, they don't last forever. There is only a hundred rares to go, you know, and once mm. you've, like we we're talking about the top of the pod, the headcount and the demand even for run of the mill average guys has went up because more people need run of the mill average guys to get up and going. And then also mm. that goes all the way up to the top of your, your, your big hitters. So I'm going into Asia this season with 11 cards. Three are super rares. Three are also goalkeepers. One kind of Venn diagrams over those two. But that's just a little kind of stable of guys that gives me a little footprint in that region. And like I say, like if I win any Asian forward that's decent, I then have two options. I can sell them into the market. Of course I can. Or I can just put a, new, a, a, a team out, you know, and one of my mm. biggest regrets of the Asian offs even, I sold... Both of them are rewards, which is why they're regrets. It's not really the players as such. But I sold Marcos Jr. for good money, and I sold Usami for good money. And I wish I just kept one of them because they were both mm. rewards. They're both guys that I would take back in in a heartbeat. And uh, I don't have a forward in Asia for my 11 cards. So I cannot actually play an Asian team <laughs> without a forward. Mm. Bad maths on my part. Yeah, I think like I'd actually, I would love to win some Asians in All-Star over the next month or two i would love that because i really want to be entertained or even mls players um i don't i kind of regret selling some of the guys i had i think a lot of my mls guys from last year were like youngsters like peppy and bello and there was two others kind of yeah, cole bassett a few guys got moves. <laughs> yeah so like it was decimated i actually would have had a team asia i think like i might try and go i'm basically just trying to sell a few rare players from europe that i'm kind of sick of by now sick of injuries sick of not being able to play them and i might go and try and build a wee budget team or two or even just stretch to one all-star sort of rare pro team for the summer and a rare team um i had an interesting point there and it's mass it's just went completely over my head it was about all this it'll come back to me but yeah it's exciting everyone's getting excited for it oh this is what it was auctions right does it it kind of pisses me off a wee bit right but it i think now for me more than ever it's apparent that kind of like the lack of structure of when so rare may or may not auction cards because a lot of these cards are shooting up and pricing up and pricing up in price and i don't know quinny you probably get a lot of this as well messages from new players and beginners saying like yep. are they not just going to dump 200 limiteds on the market next month to celebrate the league starting and i'm like maybe <laughs> I don't know like they might never do them again or they could be next week or they could be tomorrow or they could be in three months it's like the lack of structure of when to expect these auctions it, it's kind of like hard to plan and it that, that supply is a massive factor in the value of these cards is that, is that something that do you get messages like that Connie? um yeah pretty much but my kind of default response to that kind of thing is so rare have openly said on a number of occasions they want to give everyone the opportunity to not get DNP players in any way, shape, or form. And that's from refer a friend rewards. That's from auctions. That's from rewards periods. You know, they don't want people to be winning cards they can't play because we all used to complain about that. 10,000, mm. pardon me, 100,000 users ago. Um, <laughs> so yeah. that's kind of now in tablet. They don't want to give out DNPs. They don't want people to win stuff they can't utilize sooner rather than later. Um, and, uh, second of, yeah, and second of all, when new players come on board, they want to give them the option to participate in the competition that's currently running, you know? Mm. So these are two things that they've kind of openly stated on a number of occasions and we've kind of seen that's how they operate in the past. So that's all you can kind of say to that is I would expect something to happen because that's something they've told us is important mm. to them. And I would be surprised if they didn't try and keep up with that. Yeah. Ross, anything? Yeah, so... What I would add to that is, so they have come out and said that they're at the they're at the the mercy of the people who have the license. So, like, if it's J League cards, they need to get all the team's photos, for example. Um, they've come out and said this on a number of occasions. I think you've got to remember it's only like a four year old company, or like I get like like five year old at, at most. But I think it's four years old. Um, as this comes, if this grows into the global power that we all three believe it can be, 
this will this will come with time, so it'll be more integrated. You'll get this done earlier in the year, so they'll be able to get them out at the start. It's just it's at the moment they just don't have the power or the sway to be able to do that. So uh, when someone does ask, all right, when will it happen? We don't know. It's the closer mm. they get to the leagues, I think the more closer they'll be able to give a date or a, at least a date range um, of yeah. when these will be each year, so then people can plan around it. But it's still going to create it's still going to create bubbles. People try to get in before the new cards are in. There's still going to be people who are looking at last year's scores as a pure basis to go off, and then they're going to be have their hearts crushed when someone goes away to the army or whatever it is. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's so, ma- so many things in Asia. This is why you're saying, like, what's your Asian contingent? Like, nowhere near what it used to be, and that's why I see all these deals in these Asian players, and I'm like, I picked him up for, like, £6 a year ago or something, mm. and now he's going for 0.4 ETH. And I'm like, but that, that's just the game that you play. So people come into Asia because it's generally cheaper than Europe. I've moved my shift to Europe, so... Maybe I'll see that I'll see the same shift in my gallery in, in a mm. year, two years when people do the same shift as me. So that's the way I'm thinking about it. I'm not thinking about um, what's happening now. I'm thinking about what's happening down the line. I think that's a good sort of healthy attitude to have. Also, mm. it stops me crying about all the terrible deals I had. I don't know if you've seen on Twitter earlier. I was saying if we could bring in a they're talking about all the new features for Sony Data, and I said if they could bring in an ideal time to sell your card, that'd be great because yeah. I'm, it's so bad at doing it every single time. I seem to just every miss time, time. the market all the time. So then I'm like, oh, just hold on to my players. But then, like you know, John, you get itchy feet. You want to jump. You want to do something. You want a reshuffle. Yeah. So aye, it, it happens time. to us all. Um, I think I think like look, I, I get it, I get why, and then there's probably deals in the background, and maybe they're tossing and turning and trying to get the the new car design for the upcoming season correct, and they want to launch it right, and they want to do it this and that, la, 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 la. they're very busy. I get it all, I really do, but I think like I'm, I'm not throwing the toys at the pram in any way, shape, or form. But I mean, when I look at it, and I've been looking at Asia, and I've been looking at Korea, and I've been looking at Japan, and I've been looking even over in South America more than I ever had. I've been looking at limiteds more than I ever had over the last few weeks of content. And I'm realizing that of these cards that were supposedly one of a thousand, none of them are really anywhere near that, which is great, you know, less supply, prices go up, wonderful. But I mean, like, it's the new season and the last season cards for a lot of Asian players are only 200, 300. A lot of them, some of them a lot less. I don't know who the most is. But it's that inconsistency with the, like, we expect a thousand to be minted, people maybe plan for that. It doesn't happen. And now we don't know when the new season's cards are going to come. I mean, there's a lot of variables there. Okay, maybe more cards means lower prices. People don't actually want it. So I'm not even sick of banging a drum saying, like, they should have a 1,000. I'm not saying they should have a 100. It's about, like, it's just the irregularity and the unpredictability of it and then not being able to look forward and work out how many cards are we actually going to get and when are we going to actually get them. Because demand is there, demand is growing, but we don't have a fucking clue about supply. And that's half of this whole equation. And it's just, like... I, just, I, I would like to see a bit more clarity of that going forward. I know they're busy. I know they're in the trenches. I know they've this. I know they've that. And again, for me, it really isn't that big an issue, but I do think it is kind of maybe a problem um, that can't be that hard to fix. But maybe I'm talking shite. It's not an angle I plan to go down. Bottom line is I am very excited. I'm getting a couple of MLS goalkeepers back, a few players from outfield, Luis Super Air here and there. And it's exciting. Um, so, yeah. And what division else? are you targeting, John? I think I'd really like to be able to put out... I, I, I think you could quite feasibly now, if I was to sell a couple of European players and get an ETH or two in the bank, I you know, like that money maybe that I shouldn't have spent on Cody Gakbo, or maybe that money that I spent on the per share super rares. You know, that money. If I'd yeah. have kept it, I probably could have got some... Like, I could have built, like, a really decent D2 team, I think, for the summer. I actually think, like, you could go in and buy five... Maybe the keeper would kill you, but if you even got a rare keeper... You could probably pick up four guys in a stack for your outfield positions for 0.3, 0.4 each a super rare that might pop off twice this summer. I think I think that's possible. Um, maybe it's a bit mad, but I think that'd be fun. I also think you could just maybe stretch it and just do a D4, D3, so rare or rare pro. You could because you need to be grinding that ETH too. Um, so I don't know. Look at the minute, I've got a few players up for grabs. Uh, should try and shift them on, but it's not going great. I don't really want to sell any of my cards, to be honest. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's where I'm at. Do either of you anything else on, anything else on that topic or will we move on? Uh, I've just got a sort of closing point. Um, just to obviously remind you, John, they can only ish, or they can only sell by auction half of them. So the other option is like Ooh, increasing yeah. rewards. But uh, and, and as well with the limiteds, they've obviously got the ones that go out for referral now as well. So that comes out of that. So I, I'm assuming the rare is 50-50 now, just with yeah, the distribution. But even... 
So even still, that's like one auction a week, basically, if, you, if you've done it over a calendar year. It's obviously slightly more because they do more towards the start of the season than they have a dry mm. spell. But they'll not want to just... I mean, there's been so much talk about rewards recently. They'll not just want to ramp them up and then have to ramp them back down again deliberately. I think they'll try and find some sort of balance. But mm. I reckon we... Like, surely with Limited, you could, there, there's so much more scope for rewards. Or, or, uh, there has to be. Do you want to know something? Like, let, let, me tell you, let me tell you this, right? I recorded some stuff with Techers and that. It goes out over... It'll, it'll be out probably a day or two after this. And uh, Techers told me that since they've had Limited, do you know how many Limited and Bappes have been issued as a reward? Tell me. 11. Should there not be like 500? <laughs> <laughs> by some but, like you know when did the limited come out like four or five months ago yeah yeah what's going on there <laughs> you know? so there's definitely more scope for all sorts of rewards to be bulging out the sides you know like but even enough, like it... sorry go for it uh, i was guessing no, I was gonna... that pays a star and like you know less people win stars yeah. than tier threes but even at that you know like there should be yeah. more than 11 of them there should be more than 11 of them and when i look at it now even like looking at Takashi Usami, I pulled him up when you mentioned him. Can I just see what his price was at? 269 limiteds. How many of them were auctioned and how many of them were rewarded? I'd say the 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 boatload of them were probably auctioned. That leaves how many rewards in the bank of last season's mint. Why not to have celebrated that league comeback last week, have a special weekly where the top 200 managers get a J League or K League player? Do, do you know what I mean? Like They yeah. have the rewards there. People want them. Ugh. I don't know. Again, it goes just back to that point of like you're you're dead right to bring that up, Ross. About like you know, certain amount of them are for awards and and referrals yep. and X and Y and Zs. I get that, and that's fair. Maybe something overlooked a bit, but it is just maybe a little bit frustrating the lack of transparency around when cards will be coming. And you don't need it to be like, oh, here's the auction schedule for the next six months, and every second and every minute is is accounted for. Just a case of like, you know, expect the K League week here and this week there. Maybe these guys. Are I, I don't even know how they would do it, but yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see, lads. Scotland, you're both Scottish. Good luck to everyone at home trying to listen. Um, hey, we did. We have Celtic cards on the platform, but we have no league announcement. Mm -hmm. So, what the fuck's going on? Any know. thoughts? I know. Yeah, of course. Um, it's been something that I've been advocating for for ages, and I would have made such a lot of money um, at this point because, like I said, I've got quite an intimate knowledge of the league, so that's a bit annoying. But um, it'll eventually come. Um, I think it'll be somewhat. I think we were, we were, we've we've done a couple of videos, John. They'll be coming out whenever, um, and it's just talking about. I think it's going to be like a utility league, if that makes sense. Um, so a lot of people use like their Belgium league for stuff like that. I know they've got good youngsters, but I think it's going to be right here and now. So five. So as soon as it comes on, I think it's going to integrate straight away. Do we want it now? Of course we do. Want it as soon as possible. The good thing is, obviously, Quinny is a Celtic fan. I, I don't have a, a bearing either way, really. Um, because I don't support either team, but they can like like you said, it's going to be with the Celtic and Rangers, it's going to be mad, and then the rest of the league is going to be different. Um, so you're going to have the two dominant teams, really dominant, and then you're going to have the other ones who are going to come into like East grinding teams and stuff like that. So in terms of the actual fanfare, it's mainly about the old firm teams, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. the rest of the teams that obviously it'd be good to get them on, have a full league. Um, I just don't see what's what's holding it up because if it's if it's financial incentive for the the Scottish Premiership, then it's an absolute no-brainer because it's a league that gets heavily underpaid by the TV deal and sponsorship and everything else. So I don't see how extra money coming to the league would, would ever be a an issue. So I can't really put my finger on why it's taking so long unless they're trying to do some sort of grand reveal or try to leave it to a certain date or something to do with marketing. I don't really know. And again, this comes down to transparency. As you said, John, mm. we just want a bit of transparency. How, how long has it been on... Uh, so they're data now, like three weeks, four weeks, something like that. It's been a while. It was those, you know, like whatever about rumors and so rare data, this is and whatever. It was the the reward cards that come out. There's actual Celtic cards on the platform. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, so like it has they, to be they, they, can't, they, can't, they can't have even issued that an error unless they had the yeah. license. So it proves straight away they've got the license. They have to, or else that would be. I don't. I don't even know if that'd be legal. Now, the only thing I'll say, and again, I don't know how all this works, but I have been on a call. You get this too, Quinny. You get hit up by football NFT projects, and they want to do a collaboration with you, and blah, blah, blah. And I humor a few of them because I actually kind of look what looked like like the look of what they're doing. Like I did a video with Ludo Labs, was a one-off. 
um do you know there's a few others out there that i, I kind of like and yeah okay if you come and talk to me like yeah i'll talk about your project because i like it but there's a lot of shit out there anyway this was one of the ones that was like oh that's interesting let's have a chat chat with a guy from ultimate champions and i was pretty it was pretty much brought to me in that call at least from their perspective now they're a million times smaller and so rare at the moment but from their perspective they were competitors Okay, I think they have some guys who are ex Ubisoft there or something. They need to back themselves as competitors, which to me makes me think they would be competing for the same licenses, right? Now, and their announcements on their Discord welcomed Hibs on the eighth of February. Eighth of February, yeah, just a few weeks ago. Yep, they welcomed Hibs, right? Now, I don't know what the extent of that license is, or if multiple people, if they're putting out the license to multiple different companies, the Scottish Premiership. So maybe this is a non-event. And then a couple of the, the day after they said, "Hey everyone!" After yesterday's announcement, the Hibs were able to welcome a new league to our game, the Scottish Premier League. Now, whatever about the rest of that message, this is another competitor that's licensed in the Scottish Premier. So I just wonder: is that something that's been a spanner in the works and trying to iron things out, or is it just nothing to do with it? I don't know. It's just something I observed. But, you, um, surely you know you'll know better than us with the the physical trading card space. I don't know because you said was it Tops had an exclusive thing with Dortmund, for example. So mm. I'd imagine if they're able to strike an exclusive deal with them, it might be that they're paying them more. So they might be able to have different levels of licensing. So say for example the Scottish Premiership, they just get the license to print the cards. They don't have an exclusive license, whereas mm. say something like La Liga is the official licensed nft of the league and i think that's what the premier league one is is going to be so it's going to be like the official one place to get your premier league stuff yeah because i've seen yeah. like andy and andy robertson came out with something and it was a completely like non-branded not even didn't even have like liverpool badge it was just it was really odd and he got a lot of backlash for it and stuff like that on twitter um yeah so it was just like a red t-shirt you know, wasn't it it was like a graphic Ah, it was it was bizarre. So again, I think there might there might be different levels of licensing. I, I think anyway, and it might be for like a set period of time. So you might have the exclusive yeah. license for a certain period, and then after that, you maybe have to bid for it again. Again, it's, yeah. it's all stuff that I don't feel like us as users should be bogging ourselves down with too much. Yeah. Um, just because it's it, especially if, if we've got trust in the people to do it right, they'll be doing it right. It's all speculation. I mean, what I'm saying here is pure speculation. I don't understand the licenses. I don't have a fucking clue. But all I know is Celtic cards were awarded a week or two ago and we haven't seen the Scottish Premiership. So then it's, as a podcaster and as a content creator, let, let's speculate. What the fuck's <laughs> keeping them? Are they waiting for the lo- something to do with the league? Do you know, the league's mid-season. Why would they be waiting on that? Maybe they're just ironing out a few kinks. You know what it's like with leagues and clubs and trying to launch things. Maybe they're just waiting for the something. Radio silence is, the radio silence is the annoying thing for us. That's... We yeah. just want to know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why are there Celtic cards on the platform? Like, talk to us. But anyway, it is what it is. It's exciting when it happens, I'm sure. I mean, me and you have recorded a couple of videos, Hendo, Quinny. I'm sure you'll have loads of content around that time. Um, let's just hope it's soon. I'm kind of getting itchy. I'd say you two are going, getting 10 times itchier, like, in terms of, I mean, you, you grew up watching that league. You know, okay. so you can't wait. I see you, Quinny, and Alex, simply Alex, talking about your Celtic funds. Getting the cards sold, building up a pot, ready to go to auction and get your your one of the hundreds. Is it? Um, no, I would. I, I probably will go after one of the hundreds. To be honest with you, maybe there's a, a jersey number or two I, I might chase down. But I'm after. I don't know. I definitely need a goalkeeper, so I'm definitely going to buy a few Joe Hearts. Um, yeah, for sure. I think the whole Scottish league is like I, I've been saying this for the last since all probably for the last fortnight or so. But I do think it's like a bit further away than what everyone in the kind of the echo chambers of social media kind of think when you see like the good chamber awards coming out and then when you get the leak on so rare data of all the pictures on the squads because um normally in the past when we've had those leaks something has happened a week later 10 days later or something i'm pretty sure psg get leaked like the night before mm. uh, it was on the blockchain or something like that the mbappe i thought i remember getting a sent a screenshot from somebody about that and i think there was something with Bayern as well there was some sort of forewarning that that might have been coming um, and uh, so for those leaks to now be like a month old or something at this point, I think um, it was definitely something, you know, that my initial kind of thought was, because what happened, right, is when all those pictures changed on so rare data, like um, none of the Japanese lads, none of their pictures changed because they obviously knew, oh, we've got cards of them on the platform. Don't mess with mm. their pictures because people will notice. But they did it. They changed Jackie Marcus and they changed them. Um, it turns out Edigucci as well. Obviously, he wasn't in the he wasn't in the team that night, which is why that wouldn't have came up. Um, but what it felt like to me was like it's like they were getting ready for it. 
But like I say, that's now like a month old. So when you were chatting about the Ultimate Champs guys or whatever, I was thinking there about some stuff I heard about, like um, the toy industry in like the 60s and the 70s when Star Wars became a thing and it was about selling Star Wars toys and all that kind of stuff. And one of the guys that owned one of these companies, it was a really small toy company. And I can't remember who it was exactly. It may have been like G.I. Joe or some something, right? But they struck some sort of exclusive deal to get all the toys for this TV show or this kid's thing. And it was a massive deal. And they got it dead, dead easy. And it wasn't. And then the story basically pans out that um, the guy had no idea like how valuable an exclusivity uh, deal was worth, which is why they just mm. gave it to this little company without much thought about it. And when you were talking there about that Ultimate Champions thing, that story was kind of replaying in my head alongside so rare so so rare have also been going out and getting the licenses for bundesliga la liga real madrid psg bayern all these teams and we know the exclusivity is what they're all about and exclu exclusive nft um mm. licensing and when if you think about over the last two or three years whenever they're going to companies and saying we want the licensing for your exclusive nft if uh, bayern munich don't give a hoot or don't give a crap and if psg don't even know what an nft is and they give so rare the exclusivity not really thinking anything about it then so rare have been able to kind of hoover up a lot of exclusivity to this point but then when you go shopping around for like the premier league and the scottish league and maybe some other ones that we don't know about and there's a competitor involved then the price of exclusivity goes up you know and the terms around exclusivity goes up and then maybe they don't even want to do exclusivity maybe they want to give it to both of you and get paid mm. off of two people you know so i feel that there's probably something really dull and boring like that that's going on, if anything. Yeah. You know. Well, look, bottom line is I'm excited for it to, to happen. I, I kind of want another league to care about. Um, We've recorded some content. I can't wait to put it out, but I'm kind of holding it back, thinking it's imminent. But, I mean, you know, they like Thursdays. Maybe I'll put the videos out. Maybe it'll happen when we're sitting by the pool, Quinny, next Maybe. Thursday. That's something else to talk about. So we're off to Spain. We're off to Spain next week. Quinny, you organized a trip. Tell us about it or tell us as much as you want to. So we're going to my family friend's villa. It's a big, you guys have seen the pictures. It's a big six mm. bedroom baddie, pool, driveway. It's an absolute nail. I've never been to it. He's only had the house for like five or six years. I've not been abroad in, or maybe it's, I can't remember. I've not been abroad in like seven years anyway. Um, so obviously, with the, you know, I, I've always had access to that place. And I say I've just not been abroad in so long. But then when the ticket cards came out, it was just like, how can we, how can we get over? How can we get some football done, and then um, make use of, um, you know, the pad and just try and have a great mm -hmm. trip. Obviously, you guys were up for it. And we've got the tickets all sorted, and we're going to be catching Valencia at home at Granada, so we're in the Mestalla, and uh, Elche at home at Barcelona. So mm. it should be a great week, great weekend, great week in particular. So I'll be taking the week off. <laughs> It'd be great fun to see because I seen Barcelona in December, so I'm starting to feel like a Barca fan. But they've they made a lot of signings since then. You'll get to see your boy Ferran Torres. Yeah, we'll get to see Big Adama, Obama Yang, Jordi Alba's back, Danny Alves is playing. What's going on there? It'd be good fun. Um, I have Ronald Araujo if he's still in my club by then. He might fund an old MLS splurge, but who knows? Um, Ross, are you excited? Ah, oh, mate, absolutely buzzing. Um. I'm I'm obviously a bit of a football junkie to be honest. Um, I'll go and watch football anywhere. I was actually I consider going to Kelly Hearts last night, which is like a League Two team in Scotland, <laughs> just just because it's close to me and because I had nothing else to do. I end up I went to the gym instead, but that's by the All by. Right. I'll go and watch. Flex. I'll go and watch football. I'll go and watch football anywhere. Um, honestly, love watching football. The Mestias, obviously, the, the story around they're meant to have a new stadium. They basically ran out of money. So they're still using the old stadium. So this could be like not once in a lifetime opportunity, but it could be that, say, for example, in five years' time they get it done and we're never back. So it's a good chance to go to a really historic stadium. And then I've I've been to the new camp. I've never seen Barca play. Um, so obviously we're still not going to the new camp to see them play, but we are seeing them play um, at Elche. So that'll be great. Um, add to another couple of stadiums and obviously just get a few days in the sun, mate. You know, a couple of four day week, four day weeks at work and then. Uh, a long weekend in Spain, so absolutely buzzing. Could have done with a couple of sunbeds, though. Really cool. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna burn. I, like Irish and Scottish people are not built for the sun. And like you, Quinny, like I've been away. I was in Spain that once, and I think I've been to like England. But like since COVID kicked in for me, it, like the travel has just been decimated. Like my skin doesn't know what vitamin D is. So when I go over to Spain and those 20 degrees, even 18 degrees hit me. Sorry for Americans listening. We dealing in Celsius, not. Fahrenheit, um, like normal people, 
But the <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I'm just gonna burn. One of you lads is gonna have to plaster me in sun cream, and my back has a it's a bit hairy at times. Um, I'm gonna say at times in patches. It's kind of weird. You're gonna enjoy it. But um, I woke Quinny. I woke. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, look, I'm buzzing. It'll be really good fun. Um, and obviously, I don't know about you. I was just gonna sorry, sorry, button John. But the fact that it's, this is kind of what we've said for ages. Like this is what Soria can do. Can bring like people together um, around football. We all love football. We've never met each other, but we've known each other for like three, mm. three and a bit years. So it's just the fact that it's all culminating. Uh, and obviously, Soria is helping us out with, like you said, with those tickets. And it was something that people were able to win through the Soria tournament. So that's just yeah. like. It's all coming full circle now. It's really cool how they've managed to do it. And fingers crossed, because we've not seen too much of that since. Um, mm. I'm hoping that they bring a, a lot of that back, especially in like the new European season, um, if they've got new licenses, for example. I, even though I can't see a lot of people wanting to go to like Ross County against St Mirren, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the th- it's a, that comes into the rewards conversation, by the way. The whole conversation around, like for me, the rewards... The roads are like as they stand and winning cards and Ethereum is only pa- half the battle. For me, long term, when they have the logistics to do it, experience is, is the other half of it. And the, the valuable and the the invaluable and, and the thing that you can't put a price on, like how many experiences can they give away? Ludo Labs, another NFT project in the football space, are getting videos sent to people from Paulo Dybala and from Patrice El- Evra. They hosted nice. the spaces in their Discord with Ask Me Anaheim with Diogo Dalot. Like they have this sort of shit going on, do you know? Um, behind you there, Quinny, genuine or pinging out signed shirts left, right, and center. Do you know there's there's no limit to the amount of that so rare can do if they get their arson gear and have the employees to to push the logistics. But um, as you say, look, it's an, it's incredible like what the platform can do. I've been invited to Portugal in the last week, um, so shout out to anyone from the Portuguese community. I think a few of them met up and I recorded a video with someone from that community. We're saying come over to a Benfica game, so hopefully that'll happen planning to go to New York. I'm going to Berlin on a personal sort of trip tomorrow. I fly out to Berlin um, with my girlfriend and I'm actually going to meet Niftio, who's based in Berlin oh, nice. for a cafe on Friday, um, which would be nice. And, you know, like that wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for my little internet football friends with our JPEGs. So, <laughs> and I mean, like that that's only the tip of the iceberg. I think us three who've known each other for years and who constantly put out content, and a lot of people will kind of know us. It'll be weird, like seeing what you actually look like in real life. <laughs> Quinny, you're much taller than I always think you're going to be. I always peg you as like a 5'10", 5'11 guy. No, he's he's not. He's a midget. He's he's having you on. I think you're a midget. He's he's five foot four. (laughs) (laughs) Quinny, you told me you're like 6'3". And hence, you actually are like a 5'7 guy, aren't you? We've established this before. I'm 5'9". 5'9". Someone has to be. I think it was a drunk cast before where we played Guess the Height in the audience and... Yeah, we were surprised about your height and Quinny's. <laughs> no, it was Stuart that was a surprise that night. He's like a basketball player. Big Stuart. Oh, was yeah. His handle again. He, he was like massive. I thought he was going to be tiny. That's what you said, Hendo. You're like, you're a midget. <laughs> 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 he's like, no, I'm not. And he was like, I seven foot or something. <laughs> you're going to look like the dream team. Like, it's like Ed, Ed, and Eddie or something. Like, with the short guy, the tall, the tall skinny guy, and then the chunky guy. Like, I'm not it's unfortunate tall. my role, but look. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, lads, I'm absolutely buzzing. This time next week, Quinny, we I'll be landing and you might be picking me up or I'll be getting public transport to you. But we'll suss that out. And then Thursday, we we'll lounge with the pool. Friday, the boys meet us. Saturday game, Sunday game, home on Monday. Four or five days in the sun. It's always great when you can justify that it's work. Do you know? I have to go <laughs> totally. and make content. <laughs> Babe, I have to go and make content. Do you know? I have to try and push the content to new heights, babe. <laughs> <laughs> really it's just beers and sun but anyway I hope she's not listening. um so 100k users we've talked about all that um just a shout out to everyone listening if you're listening on spotify if you're listening on apple uh, there is a third option now uh, you can go and watch this on youtube you just need to look up 1 37 p.m that's o-n-e like spell one then three seven uh p.m uh it's the people who power this podcast and they put this out on video format each week if you're watching us already hello do you want to give the guys a wave Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. And if you're listening in podcast format, please consider leaving a review. There's loads of handsome bastards on Spotify. Apple people are stingy fuckers, but I'm sure you want to change the narrative here. If a few years leave reviews, I'll start slagging the Spotify people. So I'm trying to put, I'm trying to basically ping them against each other, lads. So creative, isn't it? Um, right. Will we answer some questions? Yes. 
Okay, so there's a lot of them. A good bit of a response, which is always nice to see. You see the thumbnail there with Solaire? I'd actually yeah. love to pick him up before going there. I've been thinking about it. I'd love to pick one up. Just I was itching about like a... I say to Quinny, I'll never get into limiteds, but I feel like for something like this, I might just put together one like for a week and then sell it yeah. off after. And then what see are you going to lose? Build a Valencia Barca combo. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking, or like some something like that, and that's then fine. just stack it together, mm-hmm. put it into an all star or whatever it is, and then sell it off next week. Yeah, Definitely. his rare prices are spicy enough, but he really is the standout option at Valencia, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Fun. He's, he's basically the the successor to Parejo. The successor yep. to Parejo, he actually is. Um, he's a super rare on the market there, 2.25. Decent. Saucy, but I mean, if you could get them down to 4x rare or something like that, maybe you'd be maybe you'd be in the right ballpark. But anyway, uh, questions. So let's see, who do we go for first? Let's see, Simply Alex. Do right. you think the advantage early adapters have needs to be reduced? For example, having more cards with better XP across more leagues for cheaper costs? I think something that I've noticed big time now in Limited is that the XP is fucking huge. Maybe other people experience this and feel this in Rare. Um, but I mean, like, in Limited now, I have a Kawasaki Frontal stake, Frontale, as so Rare Japan corrected me, I have a stack. But I mean, like, they all have shit XP. So realistically, me playing the five-man stack is stupid. I have to play a four-man stack and then throw in a Danny Parejo or something just to spice it up and hope he, he's captain and me do 100 and he's the differential to push me above the XP of the other stackers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's the same with the Ajax stackers. Um, I think in Rare they experience this because so many people run it. But in Limited, for example, the amount of Ajax stackers is obscene. So like half an XP, half a percent XP is huge. Um, so yeah, I just, I've just i noticed the XP recently a bit more and I'm starting to value it a bit more, I think. But you'd think I should have done that for a year and a half. like, But um do either of you think the the advantage needs to be reduced? And if if it does, how could you do it? I think it'd be fucking uproar. I don't know how you even do it. I, I laughed when he uh, when I read the question, and then I, I laughed again when I, I seen it was the first one you wanted to talk about because I'm like, what, how can you change this? Like change XP? No thanks. How, and then what? Ta- I, I don't get it. I, I don't get what the problem is to fix. Like because like the the price of what I've paid for a card, about the price any of you two have paid for a card. Is, is what it is, you know, like, you know, people that bought their house in the 60s don't, you know, they're not subject to different rules to people that buy their house and, to, you know, it's just this the price of things, you know. Mm. And then I say XP, you know, what, my card's full XP and what, you want to take XP away now or something? I, I, I really don't get where it comes from. I don't really get, like, what the problem is about XP or me having cards that are cheaper than what they are today. Everyone yeah. wants to have cards that are cheaper than what they are today. <laughs> I I agree. Mm. Um, I've even seen like because obviously I'm quite a fan of trying to get like a rookie card if possible, but so many of these rookie cards have got like one percent bonus on them. So mm. they've either not the, the issue then is training, or it's when they've been maybe transferred about between people and their 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 uh, experience is then half down. So then they can only reach a maximum X. I can't remember how much it is, but obviously they put in the maximum experience or whatever. So it comes down to training. So maybe Soria can make training easier. I think they need to have an auto fill button. For people who don't want to do their lineups, I think Quinny and I, well, un- unless I'm rushing for time, we try and set out our lineups for like, right, I've got four champion players there, or maybe need to add a fifth. Sometimes use it as that kind of thing, as a mental mm. check to like, it's a good thing each week because maybe if you're selling players and buying players, it's a good sort of like, where am I at kind of thing. Otherwise, if they add in an auto, uh, an auto train button where everybody just gets filled in lineups till there's no more players to put in, um, they could they can maybe add that I guess, but or make training more engaging. I don't really know, but in terms of the experience, I wouldn't say necessarily early adopters have an advantage um, unless they've bought their cards really early, held them on till now. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really, I, I don't really get that question either. I like your kind of yeah. approach there, but I was thinking about like handicapping, like, like for example, myself, and thinking why would you do that and what would the net gain be? But the flip side could be help other people catch up. I'd be quite happy for that. I don't care if they want to help, like maybe players. Because again, they've said before that the way the XP system works, etc., it's very unlikely you're going to get a player past level 10 in the first season, just the way XP is built and all the rest of it. Maybe they do something for training. So in the off season, maybe that stretches to level 11 or 12 or something, you know, or I don't know, some, something, that, I'm just saying abstract numbers, but yeah, it's something that might help people get up and running a bit quicker. That I would be up for that, but I've got no idea in terms of other than giving XP out for finishing in the top 
two thousand in the special weekly or something like. I don't know what else you well, could. I was going to say we're from we're from a time where you used to actually have to trade players away because they were too high powered for your lineup. So you'd be in Discord yeah. saying, "Has anyone got a seven point two five percent or seven point two percent goalkeeper? Because mine is eight point six. I can't play him." So when you're talking about early adopters having their cards from straight on, nobody's really got their own cards because they were trading them about because they were too high powered. And that's yeah. why eventually when you got to a certain level when these like vanikins were like so high level that it didn't matter what division you played them in because if he was banging a massive score then th these get the that's when early adopters had massive advantages so they have changed it to help people the, f the mm. first few levels of the of the growth are easier like it gets harder as you go along we've seen it i think when last last year we were talking it was me you and mcbride we're talking about the importance of like off seasons and what are we going to do in the off season one of the main things was get all these players in training for three months by the time they come back, they had 3%, 3.5% on them. So the, the issue is training here, not experience. Mm. So if you want to if you want to improve the experience gap for new people, because they already put 5% on the new cards. So unless you've done a year plus of training on your card anyway, you're behind. So mm. it's actually harder for the early adopters. So our flips on its head, basically. Alex, you're talking, <laughs> you're talking nonsense, mate. You're talking nonsense. I have a couple of points there, right, just to throw in. Um I think they could give away XP more. I think that'd be a fun thing that could be rewarded for more different things, um, be it top 100, top 50 places or something, get extra XP, or the first 50 people outside the rewards get extra XP as a wee sweetener, or, you know, there's a load of things they can do. I mean, you don't want to give everyone tons of XP to the point that XP just becomes a piss easy to accumulate and it disadvantages those that have trained a card for two years. But, like, my other thing is around that, I'm just looking at the kind of points he summarized there, e.g. having more cards with better XP across more leagues for cheaper costs. It's the cheaper costs one, right? I think something that's often forgotten, and it's hindsight is 2020. Everyone's fucking genius in hindsight. You see when I bought Nuble for 70 quid, I felt like I was an absolute crazy bastard because <laughs> NFTs weren't as established at the time. So rare it was nowhere near as established as it is at the time. That could have went down the gutter the next day. The risk proposition was 50x, 100x higher. And that's why the prices were so much lower. Do you know, it was a different time and the risk profile associated with the whole platform was different. The reason there's so much hype now, the reason there's so many users and the reason the prices are through the roof is because it is a much safer proposition with so much more upside, do you know, than it did at that time. That was a big risk. And at that time, I want to make it very clear to everyone listening, like we thought we were crazy bastards. When I went and stretched and bought someone for 0.4 ETH, which at the time might have only been 400, 500 quid, I was like, what am I doing? These are JPEGs, man. Like, I'm literally buying a virtual card for 400 quid, for 300 quid. Hans Vanneken, what am I doing? I spent like 800 quid on Berghaus or Tarich or someone. I thought it was crazy. Like, it's it just, as the platform's grown, as it's become more established, as more big hitters and people um, in the community, in the NFT world and, and society as a whole are attaching themselves to it or using it, as SoRare grows and gets licensing deals and gets investment, it's just it's a safer proposition, and obviously there's more and more people who want to come to it. Do you know? It's just about that relative risk and the relative kind of like. Do you know? It's hard for me. I don't even. I don't. I don't have the words what? to describe what I'm saying. But you know the point I'm trying to make. What you're saying is exactly what your pal on the last podcast was talking about, how he invests in companies, but he doesn't do them too early. He waits for them to kind of mature before he invests mm. in them. I forget the exact terminology, but uh, Srinam that you had on last yeah. week, that's, that's, it's, that's the same kind of vibe, and it's totally true. You know, like I'm, I, I agree with that. Of course, people are going to reap the rewards now. And yes, there is, you could say, a monopoly. I think there is 100% a monopoly, in a sense, on unique division, unless you come in with hundreds of thousands. But like... Yeah, it's just the way it is. I don't know. I think it's look. It's a fun question, like because it does kind of open your your mind up. But I think like, what the fuck are you gonna do other than take stuff away from the people who've supported the platform the most with the most money for the longest and shown the most faith to yeah, reward asking, people who signed up asking, yesterday? Like yeah, we're asking a question that's twenty five years away or whatever. If if it's a sustain, sustainable platform, it lasts that long. You reach what like a saturation point where users can't grow anymore. And then you've got, say it's like a thousand cards, because we were saying if there's only a hundred rares every season at most, well, now you've got a hundred thousand users that have got one card each. Now, a lot of these will be limited. It'd be interesting to see what the breakdown of that is. But even say there's like yep. a thousand people with a rare card or whatever, right? So then, and then there's like a thousand cards. One person can have one card and it all, it all teeters on the supply and demand. You're only getting a hundred cards of each rare each year, no matter how many users it grows. So he's talking about, yeah, the prices might go mental for a, a certain while, 
but then there'll be a point where it reaches even like a small saturation where prices will come back down. It's not it's not going to go up forever. Mm-hmm. And then if it did go up forever, it wouldn't be sustainable because nobody could play it. So mm-hmm. if talking about like t- like what what then is if it's got a game, you have to have some sort of competitive advantage somewhere and stuff like when you're saying about Nubble, I think Quinny bought a, a Trub and, and a Nubble when they weren't like neither were in the teams for like nine quid or something each. But it's because you needed a goalkeeper to train. So yeah. you literally just went down and picked like any goalkeeper. I used to just buy ones for like a pound or whatever it was, or three pounds, because it was the cheapest goalkeeper in the market, so that I could train the rest of my cards. And some of them mm. have ended up being like McMath gets the occasional game in the MLS. And um I don't know if I've had any other big successes. Like Kripau was like 14 quid. He's now a starting keeper. So that was just that was purely luck out of like necessity. These weren't playing goalkeepers at the time. Mm. These, these were just like pure luck. Um and I imagine yeah. it's the same like you you picked up the Kaiser cheap and that was recently. There's still yeah. be other opportunities yeah. like that. Goalkeepers change all the time. It's just by nature there's only one of them in, in the football. So in terms of I've got away from the point there, but the competitive advantage part has to be there somewhere, or else XP's are relevant, all cards are the same. And then if you stack five Ajax players together, the person who stacks the same team is just gonna have the same score. So yeah, yeah. I like the whole Ooh. XP RPG kind of element to it, you know, because that's one thing I've always loved about this game with the NFT angle is like that ownership that digital thing and like john me and you've been talking a lot about this sani since i sold you you know and i'm like i'm proper like it feels weird right but i'm definitely going to be like supporting every team he goes into i mean supporting like i hope that card wins stuff you know and yeah. um, the removal of xp and that kind of tangible element changes a lot of stuff for me personally but on the risk pro- profile of the company like one thing i say to people whenever this conversation comes up is like i've got videos from june 2020 i've got videos from august 2020 go and look at them and you'll see what the site looked like, how crap it looked, how sketchy it looked. And like, you'll, you'll hear me saying stuff like, I'm putting like 200 quid into this. And, you know, I've got to mentally tell myself I'm burning it because I've got no idea <laughs> if this is going to be worthwhile yeah. or, you know, whatever. And um, as I say, you know, so if, if you're trying to imagine what John's getting at, there's t- tons of visuals out there. You can go and really try and put yourself in the shoes because yeah. it did take a leap of faith that this this vision had, had legs, you know. If- like... Even to take that step to join, I was a guy who was in the space. You can see how passionate I am and how exposed I am to it now, time-wise, financially. It took a call with us three two years ago, no, not two years ago, a year and a half ago, where you two jumped on a call with me and talked to me about it, and I put a bid for 30 quid on Zielinski and thought I was being absolutely fucking crazy. And I picked up Zielinski, and then about a month later, I was hooked, and I remember sitting here drinking cans, playing poker, I think it was mid COVID. Do you know one of those poker games everyone used to play on Poker Stars? I think it might have even been like a, a football index poker stars night thing. And um I ended up buying like remember El Tanaka? I um, mean. When he yeah, when he so was a that. beast <laughs> and bought like a couple of other guys. And I thought I was insane. But um Ross, did you have something to say on that or we move on to the next question? Yeah, I was going to say the last thing just to cover off, we're talking about experience and competitive advantage. It, it, it's strategic. So like uh, you and I John, we always talk about the trend. How can we use the trend? Because mine's got like 12% bonus on it at this point. So it's like a mini super rare. It's halfway between a rare yeah. and a super rare at this point because he's not got any new season cards coming out. So he's retained his bonus. Plus I had him, remember there's like a split for the bonuses. So it was like, if you had the card before that, it was essentially yours for, for experience purposes. I've got both those additional ones on it. So it then becomes, what do I do with that card? Um, do I do I force him into a higher lineup because he's got a bigger bonus? Maybe he's got yeah. a worse fixture. This is all the kind of stuff that, that that's what it should be creating. That's the whole point of the XP. If you've got yeah. everybody the same, you just pick the players with your best fixtures, and then you've got no headaches. Now, like, some people want no headaches, but then it takes away the, for the fun of like if you're doing this as a fantasy football element, right? Then there has to be that headache. That's the whole point, or else it'd just be yeah. it'd be no fun. There'd be no engagement. There'd be no heartache that like, it's the heart, it's the highs and the lows that bring you back, not this, not the status quo. If that makes sense, yeah. it's, it's um, where I work, it's called the peak end rule. So it's about you remember the peaks and you remember the troughs. That's the point. Yeah. So you remember when you, you remember that lineup that got killed by a DMP and it had 380 points and you could have won the division, or you remember the time where you actually won the division, you don't remember the 320 point tier three. That's <laughs> that's what I'm getting at here. So that's 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 what it creates. It creates that environment where. Right, I'm going to go for it. I'm really going to go for it because he's got twelve percent, and he, he might have leads away, but I, I fancy him to get a decisive rather than somebody that's got nonce at home and they might get rotated or play forty-five minutes and then get subbed off or whatever. That's the question that you've got to ask. If you take that away, you take away some of the fantasy football element. You take away the engagement as well. Yeah, no, it's, look, it's never. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, but it's something I should probably be prioritizing more. Like I could go there and run, like say, Nubel 
who is eight percent, which is decent. Do you know he's what level sixteen or something? It's not amazing, but nice. like Koulibaly has thirteen and a half percent for me. Di Lorenzo has like twelve percent. Trent has like twelve percent. I think I always put. I have two Trents. There's a wee a wee brag. Um, I always put the higher XP one in D three and the lower XP one in, in rare rare pro. You know what I mean? Um, maybe I should just go balls to the wall in like a champion lineup where I put like. The Napoli lads and well, mind you, there are two defenders there, so I can't really put them. You get what I'm getting at? Maybe you could build a monster lineup of these half super rares in sort of rare, and it would be a huge advantage. Like Koulibaly goes and shoots a, a 62 pointer for me now. He's getting 70 points. It's like it's actually a big advantage. Um, I and I mean, I've sat and trained him and played him and everything else for a year, over a year, nearly a year and a half. But again, it's one of those where I've got lucky that they haven't re released napoli thank god but um anyway look to move on to the next question i think xp is an interesting conversation actually yeah. the next question i don't know how to ask it first because i got a massive response big shout out to orange fly bob flynn hey winning in winning in so rare takes time and money how much time do each of you put into the game every week research selections content watching matches etc so we'll bang through this each if i had to give you like a you're full time couldn't he? I was going to say, yeah, but it would probably be easy to tell you what I do when I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, I. 20, yeah. I, I get into here most days after the school runs, so somewhere between 9 and 10. I won't give you my full daily, but the mornings are fun. Get soon as known for getting some work and all that, you know, make some videos and whatever. And then most days I'll probably leave here like 6 o'clock or something like that. You yeah. Know? So quite a long time. And then I'll be on my phone when I get home. <laughs> Full time. Full. What about you, Ross? This is interesting because it's something that I came to Quinny about, like possibly doing a video in the future, and it's about building your network. So the more you build your network, the easier it becomes for you. So we're constantly in chats all the time saying, by the way, because I'm, I'm quite good for scouring the market and finding stuff, so I'll pass on to you. If I've not got the balance to buy someone, I'm like, I think this is a good opportunity. Go and have a look. And then you'll and have I'll a look and say, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Or I'll say, oh, it's a good deal, Don. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll just, yeah. I'll just fucking take that. So, But no, it's, it's about building your community. And then that's how you reduce your time. I'm actually going to research the shit out of this game week because I really, like, I've got the cards to win divisions. That's how, that's how I genuinely feel. There is winning lineups in what I've got this week, 100%. So I need to make sure, like, I've, I've found a lot of sources that I now trust with, like, expected lineups, injuries, all that kind of thing. So, first of all, it's about building your sources. And I think Quinny's done a video on that previously. Main one's just being sports gambler for lineups and injuries, sofa score for everything, because it's great. And then, again, building your community with other people, to how to find opportunities. In terms of, like, um, what else? I don't know, because all my, all my lineups, I've got to now buy someone that, that adds to it. So there's been very little... Um, I don't really buy like mid-range cards anymore, if that makes sense. So it's either mm. people who are going to come in and, and play because I know them and I've done general research or they're well known, or it's someone who is a complete punt or is like a like a young goalkeeper or something like that who could do something. That's where my and like that's where my cards lie now. Unless I pick someone up in a trade, that's the only reason why I've got like mm. middling cards now. Other than that, I've tried to prioritize quality, so it's, it's a bit different for me, I guess. I've never sat and thought about the actual time I put in. So if I was to look at research, I mean, research, I kind of do it through content or just from making content with people. And like, I do a bit of clicking around some days if I've a bit of a balance. I wouldn't say I do a hell of, hell of a large amount of research, but I do dig around a wee bit. Just kind of like when I'm sitting, chilling out for 10 minutes, waiting on something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, selecting teams, I kind of bang out quick enough. Um, do a little bit of digging but again it comes back to that network where if i have someone who's a little bit dubious or doubtful i'll ping it into a group and be like lads anyone know about this or i'd have already read something somewhere because of the other content i suppose that is research do you know i suppose reading discords and looking at injuries and suspension threads and this is and that's that all those kind of come into the research part of it but i think the <laughs> the selections is made much easier whenever you follow your teams every week you see when a guy's like i know from last weekend okay di lorenzo came off so he's probably a doubt cody gakbo has some sort of injury he's probably a doubt i know that jury and timber got an injury late in the game last week but apparently it wasn't too bad but maybe per sure's plays i'll be looking at that in the midweek in the champions league or wherever they are i think it's the champions league isn't it and seeing 
if that's a goer for the weekend. So I have these things in my mind already. And then again, it's that luxury me and you have Quinny of doing the lineup builders on YouTube. You know, you have the beautiful community that comes in and says, here, John, watch such and such. He's injured or he's suspended. And that's a fucking blessing. So we're blessed on that front. Um, in terms of content, I mean, on YouTube now, I'm putting out five videos a week. If anyone hasn't followed me, please do. Also follow Quinny and Pendo. You have a channel as well. You're not quite as active, but there'll be videos maybe if, if they drop Scotland one day. Um, but yeah, like five videos a week. I don't know. Let's call it an hour for each video. Plus the podcast here probably takes two hours. Add another half hour on for scheduling it. There's seven and a half hours on content. I have a call. Yeah, you're talking 15 hours a week anyway for me, at least. And that's not that's excluding all the time responding <clears throat> to DMs from beginners. Um, I th- watching I think matches. A, I, I was going to say, I think there's a concise way to sort of um, close this one off as well. And it's about it takes so much longer than any other time to know your own cards. So Quinny's probably the best person I know for actually intimately knowing, like, right, I've got this card. He's likely to play... Um, this week, because I know what this manager, how he plays, he likes to rotate. He plays this player a lot of midweeks. Um, he knows the Celtic boys. He picked four out last week. People were saying they're not going to play together. Maida's not going to play with Jack and Marcus because they played two up front. And it didn't work. And he's like, well, Maida's going to play on the right wing. And then all four started, so he reaps the benefits of knowing his own gallery. Woo-hoo. So it's about it's about being able to put your finger on the pulse with what you've got rather than everything around it. Mm-hmm. So this week, for example, um, let's just say like Jonathan David or whatever, right? We've both got him, John. You're playing him. I'm not. It's just because I've got other cards around who I think are better. I think we'll both agree that Leon away is a tough fixture in the league. That's quite yeah. an obvious one. But then there might be players who play in up, like, obscure leagues and you think, well, that looks like a good fixture for them. You look at the, the league table, actually, they're in really bad form. The team they're playing is in really good form. Um, maybe they've they've had like a, a good p- period of fixtures. And now they've got a hard period of fixtures. So you know to use them less. That's about knowing your own gallery rather than yeah. knowing football. Everybody that's on the platform, to some extent, or no football, even the people who don't watch football, because they'll be using things like so rare data to then, they'll be consuming that kind of side, like that side of the game, so they'll know, right, this guy scores a lot of goals, this guy makes a lot of assists, this guy has a great all-round score because he does 100 passes a game, they'll consume that side of it, the people who watch football might think they know it better because of the eye test, and then I feel like we're all kind of a mix of the three, watch a lot of football, mm. but at the same time, you know that you know the stats, but most importantly, you know your own players. And that takes ages to, to learn. A hundred percent. Like you get the longer you hold a player, the more you know. And I mean, even like last week I went and panic bought based off stats on so rare data. My Burghouse <laughs> sold when I hadn't planned this. I had him on the to list. I did I forgot to take him off before the game week. He sold about ten minutes before the deadline. I happened to be there and was like, What's going on? Bought Storm as a nice replacement, kind of half the price, gets goals, does bits at Mechelen, and he was suspended. And it was like, all right, well, that team was dead anyway. And I dumped the Vanekin and someone else into it. And that does come down to like knowing your gallery, following your players every weekend, seeing if they come off injured, seeing if they got bookings, keeping an eye on that. But um, yeah, I think it is just everyone maybe look again, not to go off on that whole deep bit, but like everyone does just need to keep an eye. I think I justify it personally, the amount of time I spend because I'm making content. Me and you, Quinny, are very much in the same boat. If people look at me in your videos from three months ago versus today, they're both yeah. massively leveled up. The quality of audio, camera, variations, thumbnails, consistency, we're both really leaning into it. And I think when you're doing that and you have a goal in mind for where we could be in six months or a year, I can justify to myself all that time I spend on SoRare. But I think for everyone else, I mean, you just have to take a look at the amount of time you're spending and how it's impacting your real life. So it is. it can be a deeper conversation than maybe I need to make it, but like, it's just a game. <laughs> like, calm down. Um, so, it is more important than your job, though. So, whatever you're doing, stop doing your job and play more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, if you're a teacher, fuck the kids. You know, you <laughs> tell whoa. them to fucking. Whoa, John, whoa. Tell... Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Johnny <laughs> Boy. is very important. <laughs> Johnny Boy. I think, Emily, I think you might need to cut that one. <laughs> punctuation is very important jesus christ <laughs> oh was that sort so, of show, John? no what i'm saying is if you're a teacher ignore the children get them to read a book and you can play so rare at the front of the classroom jesus quinny you sadistic bastard anyway <laughs> you say on. that you say that no I'm... culture someone's gonna clip that I and make you. me into it. Yeah, saved you saved me. But they're gonna they're gonna clip out you saving me anyway. It is what it is. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah. So 
Let's see. Next one, Jack Doyle. Can you give one player you'd be looking to buy from the Scottish Premiership when it's added, other than Celtic or Rangers players? So one player each. Don't give us too much context based on time. Just give us a player and a line or two. Quinny or Quinny doesn't know. Quinny doesn't know. <laughs> Outside Tony Celtic. Watt. Tony Watt. There he is. Okay, he's gonna go and buy a Tony Watt. Hendo, who are you buying? Uh oh. That, is it someone I would buy? Yeah, like, as opposed to someone who Who's everyone. Who's one player buy. you would be looking to buy? Is the way it's phrased. I would say uh, Benjamin Segrist. Segrist, lovely. Well, there you go. Everyone's gonna go and start clickety clacking away and checking them out. Um, the Joe says. Actually, there was two questions kind of similar here on this. Uh, we'll go for the Joe's one. There was definitely another one. Ah, come on now. Here it is. So Rare Messiah and the Joes are kind of the same, I think. Um, but So Rare Messiah, your match day vlogs do a good job highlighting the connection between So Rare and real world football experiences. Do you think So Rare can do more in this regard? Encourage meetups, going to games, etc. It's been a while since the Liga tickets and signed shirts. Kind of back to the start of the the, the show, in a sense. Um, like, do you think So Rare could do more? Have you any creative ideas for what they could do? They're obviously sending someone off to Betis and Sevilla this coming weekend, aren't they? Um. Yeah, I think, I think it's the future of the platform, personally. But yeah, completely agree. Um, it's just I think it, it works in with maybe uh, exclusive licenses, possibly rather than just general licenses. So unless we know more about the background, it's tough to say. But it's definitely something that it, it, that's that's what they want to do. They want to bring football fans and and uh, well, closer together with the teams that they support, the teams that they love, or the teams that they don't. So yeah, hundred mm. percent. It needs to be their focus. Maybe not short term, but but long term, I agree. Yeah, Quinny. I think it's definitely going to be like a norm eventually, like you, John. It's going to be like the next the next evolution or the next kind of um, <clears throat> weapon in the arsenal of the reward pool. Is is all this kind of stuff over time? Do I think they can do more? Absolutely. I think they should be laying on all expenses VIP for the Qatar World Cup for. For a few of us, you know, and uh, for influencers, <laughs> you know, get us into for some World Cup finals, you know, get us into some <laughs> big matches. They could definitely do a lot more, and I hope they're working on that as we speak. Yeah, I mean, there should be Champions League final packages. You'd like to think given oh. out. Oh, imagine! Surely, well, if anyone's gonna be able to pull that off, I know they don't have a Champions League license, but grab a few tickets, lads. Yeah. Grab a box for the night for fifty grand, or I don't even fucking clue how much it costs, and bring twenty people. Like, surely to God. I remember when they, they did the La Liga, it may have been the La Liga ticket thing, or maybe they did a ticket thing beforehand, but when I was speaking to them about it, um, I was kind of asking them the situation about it with other teams, because I, I can't remember the full situation, but anyway, what they said to me is, like, since they got, the, the first team that gave them a quite a good license for, like, merch and tickets and stuff, I can't remember who it was, let's just say it was Bayern, I don't remember. From that point onwards, they try and get all of that stuff into every deal, so mm. I did, hopefully... Um, they get to the stage where, and again, I was speaking to Dan about organizing our trip with the tickets and whatever, and he was telling me, I think some people have received some stuff in the post over the last week, like signed shirts that were won in special weeklies like five months ago or whatever. But he yeah. was telling me that they have like buckets of stuff coming in. They've still got allocations of stuff that they've not claimed and redeemed yet because of their agreements and whatever. So again, kind of back to the beginning of the pod, what I was saying earlier as well, a little bit is like a bottleneck, I think. You know, there's going to be, they're going to have, they're going to have stuff coming out their ears eventually. Shirts, signed shirts, tickets, all sorts of stuff. And uh, hopefully mm. they do more with it all. Yeah, uh, cause I, I love all that shit. And I think especially when you make content, like I love any of that sort of stuff. Any experiences can be done. And I'm sure they, like, I have no doubt they have really amazing things in the pipeline. And they'll be they'll really help both of us make good content, Connie. I have no doubt about that. Um, I think at the minute it's a logistics issue. Like, for them, there's more important things at hand. But, like, I do personally see the future of SoRare as experience 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 and like as i said before that's where you get into the realms of invaluable rewards everything else is going to be have a have a finite value on it um yeah but i think like meeting your heroes and playing football tennis with them or kicking a ball about or you know sitting down for dinner and actually having their attention for an hour or two and like it's so niche and funny but like how funny would it be to go and have dinner with hans vanneken for an hour in belgium That'd be great crack. Maybe it'd be shit crack. He'd probably be like not having a beer because he's a lord and keeping his body amazing. And maybe, do you know, maybe it would actually be shit crack, but I'd love to do it. Anyway, moving on. Another question. Um, 
but yeah, I'm really excited. There'll be two vlogs coming out my channel anyway, Quinny. I don't know what you've planned. I'm going to do a vlog for our kind of trip, and then me and you have another little trip planned. He's got dinner planned with Hans Vanneken. <laughs> you've just taken his plan. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. I think um, I think I might, I might break the trip up into because I'll be recording my stuff kind of solo, I suppose, uh, in terms of like actually holding a camera and talking into it. Um, I might even break weird up in public. Happened. It's really weird in public. I don't know if you've ever done it. I've not. Um, do you know it's funny weird. because when I opened it, when I opened the studio, um, I made a wee kind of trailery video, and I was tempted to add a few wacky ideas. I'm still kind of entertaining a few of them, but what stops me is putting that on the hand grip, which is this kind of thing here, <laughs> and walking gimbal. about, and walking about, giving it the whole. Because I'm in, the, I'm in the West End of Glasgow, not the nice bit of the West End, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I don't want to be that. Who's that dick walking down the road? You know. <laughs> Hey guys, game week two for eight. <laughs> <laughs> but that's literally it. I'm telling you, man, you'll find it weird. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing the vlog from your side and then seeing the vlog from my side. <laughs> and then we're also going to Manchester Sport in Lisbon, which I'll probably vlog yes. for the laugh. Um, but I mean, it's a the fixture is done, really, isn't it? <laughs> I'm hoping it's a show. You know, I went to the city uh, Southampton game to try and see. Oh, I went to because it's the first city game I've been to, but I also wanted to try and see Ferran Torres, and he didn't even fucking play. So, mm. uh, <laughs> but um, on that day, honestly, like, that was the first Premier League game I went to. Uh, have you been to a, a Premier League? Have you, have you been to any English football, John, yourself? I've been to like two or three United games. I was at oh. Everton City before, oh, nice. and I think oh, I might have been to one other. Can't remember. So I, I kind of got to enjoy the whole kind of panto of the Premier League for the first time, which was nice, even though the game was rotten. But what I'm hoping for when we go and see the Lisbon match is just like a good Champions League spectacle. You know, it's cold, yeah. it's cold, it's dark. You know, we're getting there under the floodlights. It's a knockout match, and then hopefully the you know because the fixture is kind of dead as a fixture. Hopefully we just see some class goals and some good football. We because yeah. the thing with City is even when they rotate in a game like this, all those guys are fighting to stay in the team. So yeah. hopefully we get a route. I'd, lo I'd love to see Foden, and I'd love to see some of the Sporting lads, and I'd love to see them play well, but. Um... Yeah, just in terms of vlogs coming. There's only been one so far, but I've literally got like four, five, six lined up for the year. I'm really excited for. Um, so let's see. Another is there any questions here that either you particularly want to answer, or will I just ping another one at you? If there's any, I thought, stand with, out I, well, I thought with time you usually do a wee quick fire. Sometimes like a wee quick fire. A wee quick fire, do you? Yeah. Oh, here's one. Well, I don't know. You see, a lot of these aren't really quick fire. Um, Red Eye Football, do you think there should be a ban on stacking to make SO5 more variable or interesting? And what does that look like? A maximum of two or three players from the same team, or perhaps every player should be from a different team? Interested in your thoughts? So for me, it would have to be a different game mode. You can't you can't throw that in now. It's a, This is one of those conversations that's always going to happen, but I think it's just stupid personally. But I mean, maybe you could talk about it for different game modes. Yeah, that, that's kind of it for me. I think, like, I, I said this, I can't remember where or when, but, like, the version of the game we are playing now in terms of SO5 and the gameplay and how many divisions you can run is uh, the hardest mode that's ever going to be. You know? So as things go on, they're only going to make things easier, like other divisions you can go into or... Um, He's put me off. Sorry, but I've told totally <laughs> I'm just still. I am still this is like, containing laughs from Ross's rants. Like I can't believe I'm not getting cancelled, but Ross is. You've been cancelled. You, you're telling <laughs> teachers to do things with kids. Mate. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You're so cancelled. You bring out the worst of me. You bring out the worst of me. The I'm thing is, John, I don't, here. I don't. I don't care about being cancelled. That's my point. So I, I just don't care. Um, I also don't really care about stacks either. Just to sort of build on Quinny's, uh, he's lost his momentum again there. It's it's too it's too hard to like. What do you do? So you can't stack five players. So you stack four players in Mbappe. Like if you've got four Ajax players in Mbappe and All Star, well that sort. Which it? is probably better than five Ajax players based on their midfield. Like exactly. Yeah. It's just obviously you can't do it if they're putting an Ajax stack in a challenger. So what happens if like you have four Ajax players in Koku, for example, or I don't know, you put four Ajax Mariaka. outfielders and then another goalkeeper. So at what point do you stop then? Is it like exactly what the question is? Is it, is it two? And then I, I don't know. For me, it's like, like then for... just, it, it, it makes sense, but it's boring. Like I find it's, it's so boring. Like I'd rather try and pick. I think and max it's, four it's... is okay, to be honest with you. If I could live with that. Because like, I don't that... think. I, I... It doesn't Sorry, do anything. I, just, I don't think it solves the problem, though. I think it's just no. making a rule for the sake of a rule. Like, it doesn't bother me, but, like, 
I could I think I could feasibly argue, maybe wrong, but I think I could feasibly argue that a triple Ajax defensive stack with two forwards from an Ren or so I know that's challenger and champion, but another fucking team that scores lots of goals could do just as well, if not better, than than the, yeah. the Ajax it's, it, top two. It's because people are looking at it in a vacuum. So like Ajax haven't been this defensively solid forever. They're just in a really good spell at the moment. So like Ajax of sort of twenty maybe 28, like 2009 to maybe like 2012, you wouldn't be looking at this the same way. Like Ajax have only conceded, what, like three goals all season or four goals in the league all season. Like, yeah. it's because you're looking at it in a vacuum. It won't be the same next season. Atletico Madrid a few years ago would have probably been the best defensive stack in the thing. Now yeah. All Black's the worst goalkeeper in the world. So it's you can't look at things in isolation or else it becomes like that. So, yeah, at the moment, the, the you see it in under-23 all the time. You've got Verts and Koku together. And I'm like, this lineup just bores my eyes. Like looking at, it, I'm like, I wouldn't even want those two players because it just bore me to death. I'm almost like, I don't know, if I, I quite like being the underdog in a way in terms of like, I want to beat these people that have got Koku and Verts and they put them in the same lineup every week. But it, it, it's just people who do stack will think you're stupid for not, and people who are against that will think that you're stupid for doing it because if one thing goes wrong, it all goes wrong. End of the day, n- there's no way you can solve this. I don't think, um, other than like you said, a new division. Yeah. Like whatever we can talk about it all day, but the bottom line is, I think it's it's just not going to happen. <sighs> bottom line, maybe in SO eleven, if it ever comes, max five per team or something, or like I, I don't know. But um, the, look, it always comes up. Were you going to say something, Connie? I was just going to say, like the, the the two kind of conflicting forces you've got with us is like Soria want to be able to onboard like. Chiara in Brazil and those fans know they can buy a full Chiara team and play it. They don't need to go and learn about MLS or European football or whatever and equally that applies across the board and then the the other power that's kind of pushing it that way is every other fantasy game anyone's ever played you cannot pick everyone in the same team. We all kind of accept that as a fantasy football element so they've got these two conflicting things that they're trying to satisfy and keep happy which is why the answer is only going to be different game modes. Because they're always going to allow people to take all their favourite team at Chiara and play them. And eventually they're going to need to make it so that there's different game modes that appeal to different, you know, test out your strength in different ways. Agreed. 100%. Well, look, lads, um, I mean, if anyone's still listening, fair play to you. Again, please do review the podcast. We're probably going to get bad reviews this week um, from talking about <laughs> Americans with guns. Ross has made it clear he's not a big fan of English people. Um, I'd like to say I treasure all my listeners and viewers, but um, <laughs> it's been fun. Um, look, the 137 game, I didn't tell you about it, but we finish with it every week. Again, I've said this for like three or four weeks now, we need to spice it up and come up with a prize. Anyone has any ideas, let me know. A great idea that was sent to me. Oh, please tell me I can find who it was. I have a feeling it was, it was the gardener himself. Um, oh, fuck, it could have been Gardner. Let me check. But basically, it was if I could get like 111 pint glasses, I could have one unique pint glass, and then I could have yeah, it was him, and then I could have 100 red pint glasses and 10 blue red pint glasses, or whatever, like super rare, rare, and and whatever unique. Sorry, I'm butchering this. Uh-huh. And they could be like prizes for people or like something. I thought it was I kind of funny, but it's a it's a logistical fucking nightmare trying to get a hundred serial numbered. You've lost, the, you've lost the place. You've lost the place. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> last week on the one thirty seven game, right? There's definitely a game show in there, John. Definitely. There's definitely a game show. Um, basically, Hendo, it went over your head. I butchered it because I was trying to look something up. <laughs> one hundred and eleven pint glasses, serial numbered, branded to the podcast as gifts to listeners that they can win from participating or some shit. Anyway, Sreeram Christian actually fucking nailed it last week. He got 135 points, which is the second or third best score ever. Um, We had Salah with an 87 and Gabriel from Arsenal with a 48, which comes to 135, an outstanding score. So fair play. He's definitely the leader of 2022, but he does not take the crown, and he was not on 137. So unfortunately for him, he doesn't walk away with the Atibo. Um, lads, have either of you got guesses? Uh, what am I guessing? <laughs> uh, two players this week that'll combine for 137 points. Game week two four eight. Yeah, the big one. Right, the one that you have give in the me, bag. Give me, give me two seconds because my players are combined to 200 plus bonus. So I'll need to find two of the lesser ones. <laughs> I'm going to say Tio Hernandez and Van Der Voort. 
Okay, gives the logic. Gio Hernandez is going to get 90 plus, and I think Van Der going to get about 35. <laughs> I think that's probably a fair guess. Uh, Teo Hernandez, you think so? I have Rafa Leao, super rare there, and I was going to play him in D2 this week. I've went a bit all out. I've got Rafa Leao, Kulisevsky, who's up against Leeds, who I think will concede, Yari Versharan, who got a goal last week, Nico Williams, and Fabian de Kaiser. I think I can do bits in under 23 D2. What's your logic on Milan? Decent fixture. Teo is going to do decent fixture. Leao. Yeah, almost. Uh, yeah, decent fixture. And last week they drew two each with bottom of the table. And obviously, if you look at the top three of the table, you know they're they're top in AC Milan. They're in pole position, but dropping two points to Salernitana is a you know. So they need that. They need a big win. They need a win of any description, but they really need a statement win uh, to get back on. There's no midweek football for AC because they don't play in Europe. So they've just went from that two each draw right back on the training pitch for a full week to get ready for Udinese, who are not an informed team at the moment. Banging. I love it. I'm hoping it works out for me too. Hendo, have you got two players for us? Yeah, do you know what? I'll stick with my PSG boys. I'll put in Hakimi and Mbappe. Um, Woo! Fingers Jeez, crossed. Right, big man, it's I, not I, the I, highest I'm, score. I'm hoping they go higher. That's kind of my logic. If they fall short, I'm maybe getting near the 137. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Okay. I like it. 235's well, look... incoming. <laughs> it's been a, or a benching would be funny. A bit of rotation. Who have they got? I, I, I think they're I think they're quite safe from it because they don't have their Champions League fixture till a week on Tuesday, so they've got mm. no reason to rotate. Um, they just rotated against uh, the last game, so I don't think they will. I heard rotate. Colin Dagba's due a game. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't but, even uh, play in the rotation. That's the worst thing. Yeah, yeah, lads, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, Quinny, people can find you, I suppose, on Twitter, but also at So Rare TV on YouTube and at Quinny on YouTube. Yep. that's fair, isn't it? Any social media, put in Quinny three thousand and one. You should see me. You got the big man. Well, I've links below to both their socials and Hendo. You are is it Hendo so rare? Yes, pretty much and everywhere. Probably the same on YouTube. Um, yeah. So look, everyone, thank you so much for listening, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. If you liked it, please do like below and subscribe to the 137 p.m. channel. You can also find me if you look up John Nellis or look up So Rare. You'll see my head there somewhere. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week.